At the very far dark, cold edges of our solar system, about 5.2 billion kilometers from Earth lies a beautifully strange and secretive planet called Pluto. Well, it used to be a planet, and for most people and astronomers it still is. But it was reclassified as a dwarf planet in 2006, and thus we only now say that we have eight planets, which to most space enthusiasts, and even astronomers, it is ridiculously inaccurate. It is located in the mystifying Kuiper Belt, an immense zone beyond magnificent Neptune, a region littered with hundreds of thousands of rocky ice bodies that can reach up to 100 kilometers in diameter, and billions if not a trillion comets too. Pluto is very far from Earth, and was hard to study and analyze, however. All that changed in 2015 after NASA's New Horizons probe made a close flyby of the lonely planet. Horizons simply opened New Horizons for Pluto. It showed a stunning planet with moons, very high mountains, an atmosphere, clouds, and a colorful surface covered mostly with methane and nitrogen. Pluto was the ninth happy member of the solar system's planet's family. But in 2006, it was excommunicated and declared a black sheep. They started calling it the dwarf planet. Of course, scientists did not make all that much sense with the reclassification of Pluto, but it became a fact, and we had to accept it. The news was hard and made many people angry. Until this day, there are petitions demanding that Pluto be reinstated as the ninth planet. But so far, NASA and the International Astronomical Union are playing deaf. Once we include Planet X, which is certainly somewhere out there waiting to be discovered. After all, Detective Webb, which began exploring the Kuiper Belt recently, might bring Pluto back along with another two orphans. And who knows, there could be a couple more lurking out there. It will be fascinating and awesome. The Kuiper Belt is more than just the home of Pluto and Eris, which should be classified as planets if it was up to the masses. It is also the home of other planet-like objects, such as the fascinating objects Haumea and Makemake. It is also the home of the famous Halley's Comet, which becomes visible from Earth every 75 to 79 years, even though it's more than 32 astronomical away from Earth and only 5 kilometers long. The Webb Telescope has been observing this belt since the 6th of October. It has sent so far amazing images and data that astronomers are currently analyzing. Frankly, I just cannot wait to see their research and results. There are images of Pluto that were taken by the Hubble telescope, but nothing comes even close to the images and details that were captured by the New Horizon probe in 2015 and later. Believe it or not, despite costing roughly $700 million, New Horizons is just the size of a grand piano and weighs only 1,000 of these. It traveled for a whole nine years just to reach Pluto. It was worth every penny and now it keeps busy analyzing other Kuiper Belt objects. Let's now take a close look at some Pluto facts and features. The young astronomer Clyde Tombaugh was one of the first people at the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona to dedicate much of his time to studying the suspected odd shift in Neptune's orbit. His efforts were quite fruitful because he succeeded and confirmed the existence of Pluto on February 18, 1930, to be exact. The excitement from the discovery was high, and many people began sending suggestions as to what the new planet should be called. The winner of this unofficial contest was 11 years old Venetia Burney from Oxford, England. Of course, the name is not new, but it is mythical. In Roman mythology, Pluto is the son of Saturn. While Pluto ruled the underworld, his brother Jupiter controlled the sky, and his brother Neptune controlled the sea. It was a planet as per NASA's and the International Astronomical Union standards for 76 years. Until, as I mentioned earlier, they decided to change its status in 2006 to Dwarf Planet, after they discovered Eris, which by the way, and I reiterate once again, should be classified as a planet too. This still makes me feel upset. Here is something rather cool about Pluto. It was a very famous celebrity in the 1930s because it debuted as a faithful dog companion to Mickey Mouse. Well done, Walt Disney. I wonder if a TV series will be made soon, and the main character will be called Detective James Webb. I do not know about you, 
but I will watch it as long as he is carrying a miniature telescope around his neck and poking around with a magnifying lens. Let's go back to awesome Pluto. It is very, very cold, and temperatures on its surface range between minus 226 and minus 240 degrees Celsius, which is nearly three times colder than the lowest temperature ever recorded on Earth in the quite harsh and uninhabitable eastern Antarctic Plateau between 2004 and 2016. The mountains on Pluto, which reaches up to 3.5 kilometers high, are made up of frozen water. These mountains are often coated with frozen methane. Additionally, some of the valleys stretch more than 600 kilometers. Indeed, Pluto is colder than ice, but it has a heart. Because on it, there is a region called the Tomba Regio, about the size of the stats of Oklahoma and Texas combined that appears as a heart shape. It is almost as if Pluto is trying to say, I am cold, but I have a heart. Please make me a planet again. Pluto also has an atmosphere made of mostly nitrogen and some carbon monoxide and methane that comes and goes depending on its distance from the sun. When Pluto's orbit is perihelion, meaning it is closest to the sun, its frozen atmosphere evaporates and becomes gases. But when it's farthest from the sun or aphelion, it freezes again and falls to the surface like snow, red colored snow if I may add. From 1979 to 1999, Pluto was perihelion and was even closer to the sun than Neptune as it crossed its orbit. Pluto's orbit is very different from the orbits of other planets of the solar system because it has a much greater eccentricity and inclination to the plane of the ecliptic. This means that in aphelion it moves away from the sun by 7.4 billion kilometers and in perihelion, it approaches it by 4.4 billion kilometers. This is less than the distance between the Sun and Neptune. The next time it will be perihelion is from 2227 to 2247. There are currently hard to investigate theories that Pluto just might have an inner ocean, which means there could be some microbial life forms lurking below. Images of Pluto show red patches on its surface this is probably due to the heavy presence of folins, which are a wide variety of organic compounds formed by solar ultraviolet or cosmic ray irradiation of simple carbon-containing compounds such as carbon dioxide, methane, and ethane, which often in combination with nitrogen or water become disordered polymer-like materials. Indeed, Pluto's images make beautiful pictures due to the presence of dark reddish, off-white, light orange, yellowish and light blue patches on its surface. Pluto has five moons, Charon, Hydra, Kerberos, Nix, and Stex. It is widely believed that the formation of this moon system originated from a collision between Pluto and another similar body in the early history of the solar system. Charon is the largest of the five moons, about half the size of Pluto. Charon and Pluto together are actually a binary system. As for the other moons, they are very small, less than 150 kilometers in diameter, and are not spherical. Interestingly, they are also very different from other solar system moons because they are not tidally locked with Pluto. Pluto has been giving astronomers one surprise after another. They expected it to be a mere ice ball, but as it turns out, it has a rocky mantle and probably plenty of rocks in the upper crust regions, which could explain how it can support immensely massive mountains. It has an atmosphere, an intriguing moon, and so much more. All I can say now is, please reinstate it as a proper planet again. For more awesome videos, subscribe, share, comment if you like, and do not forget to hit the notification button, because we are always working to bring you the best, most accurate, and awesome space news and astronomy videos.